Praise the Lord. It's good to have you on the broadcast again and thank you the Lord for what he's doing. And this song too, I've got a big message to it today. Just any day, the Lord's coming back. Each time I stop, take the time to look around me. I see the signs in appearing. Eagles all over the world. 
Now this eagle that I want to talk about today builds its nest up in the mountains, up on the rocks. The male and the female raise their children together. This is the only bird that does this. And as a, male, as a female lays the eggs, they lay one to three eggs at a time. And when the female, as the female sits on the egg, the male flies around above and keeps the predators away from it. Now, when the female gets up off the egg and flies around, the male will sit on the egg. No other bird does this. And when the male, the female will go out and hunt. When the female comes back, the male will get off the egg, and the male will go out and hunt. Now when, when this bird, when the baby hatches, it, it's in a nest that has been made with fur, with rabbits, and squirrel, all kind of fur. Now, the eagle eyesight is so good that it can spot a prey a mile or a mile and a half away. Now, uh, now when it's flying, there are other birds that come against the eagle. Now, when this eagle gets into trouble, it's got oscillated lens that comes over its eyeballs, and it flies directly into the sun. No other bird can do this. Now they try to follow it and try to attack it, but when it gets right directly into the sun, they have to turn away. Now as Christians today, when we get in trouble with the devil, what do we do? We go directly to the sun the Son of God, which is Jesus Christ. We go to Him, and we pray to Him, and He'll help us fight the devil. Amen. Because we cannot fight Him one-on-one -on, -one on our own. Now, when the storm clouds come, this eagle will fly up over the storm clouds. Get to get up over the clouds till the storm is over with. Trouble comes our way, we need to keep praying to God and keep praying to Jesus gets us up over the storm clouds. Now this bird, when it gets time for that baby to leave the nest, they'll start tearing the uh, fur and all out of the nest to make it rough for the baby. And this baby will crawl out of the, of the nest and get on the rock. Then the baby, that rock would get hard. That baby would crawl on that mama's back. Yeah. Now, that baby don't know what it's getting into. As Christians, sometimes we don't know what we're getting into. Come on. Because we, we sometimes we listen to the devil instead of listening to God. Amen. And next thing you know, we listen to the devil. What have we done? We have sinned. And we have to ask for forgiveness. Now this baby gets on mama's back where it's, where, where it's soft, where the feather. Then what happens? All of a sudden, mama takes off of that cliff. Now the baby's in midair. And daddy takes off of the cliff. Now daddy is flying around up here to make sure no birds or anything else bothers that mama and the baby. That mama starts weaving and wobbling. What's she trying to do? She's trying to get that baby to fall. That's, now, a lot of Christians today, that's what they're doing. They're weebling and wobbling. Well, I'm a Christian, but I can do this, and I can do that, and, and I can make it into heaven. As a Christian, you can't weeble and wobble. You've got to stay on that straight line. With what the mama's trying to do is get that baby to fall to learn that baby how to fly. Well, all of a sudden, that mama will turn upside down, and the baby will fall. And the baby's falling. But what the baby don't know 
if that mom and daddy can fly faster than it can fall. On a downward spiral, the eagle can fly about 100 miles an hour. And just before that baby hits the ground, mama and daddy want to swoop right up and under it and pick it up. What people don't know today, if you're a backslider or if you're a Christian and you're, you're falling, Jesus Christ can reach down and pick you up faster than you can fall. All you have to do is start praying and ask the God to help you. Yeah. Now, that, now, I spoke a little bit on this a few weeks ago, I think. Now, these eagles, they go into what they call a moping period. Now, I've always said it's not a sin to fall. It's a sin where you don't try to get back up. It's a sin where you just lay there, you get comfortable, you say, well, I'm not going to pray no more. I'm not going to try to get back up. I'm just going to lay here. Now, these eagles, when they go into this moping period, they go into a, a, a valley. And they get comfortable in that valley. And when they get comfortable in that valley, where they're on their beak, where their two nostrils, they get clogged up. And when they get clogged up, they can't fly because they can't breathe. Other eagles come along and drop meat in front of them. And they try to crawl to get that meat and get and if they get, get hold of that meat and eat it, they can come out of that valley. Because that meat gives them strength and energy. Now, when we're, when we're in that valley, what kind of meat do we need? We need this right here. We need, we need this kind of meat right here to get us out of the, out of the valley. Yeah. The Holy Bible. We need to get into it and start breathing. We need to start praying and asking God to help us. If we need to, call a friend. Say, hey, I need some help. I need some prayer. Please help me and help me pray. Get out of this valley. Come on. Well, now this, the one out of five will make it. Only one out of five. Well, this eagle, the one that, that makes it, it'll start eating that meat and it'll start get, getting strength up. And when it gets strength up, it'll go to a rock and it'll uh, take his beak and start hitting it against a, a rock and clear his nostrils. Now, don't, now, if you know to get stopped, don't, don't go start beating it against the rock now. <laughs> Amen. But that, that eagle will come out of that valley. That one eagle will come out of that valley. It'll go back to the same rock that it was born on. The eagle, whatever rock that eagle was born on, it'll go back to the same rock and die. When that eagle gets back to that rock, it'll, it'll, get, it'll stand up, it'll throw its wings out, and it'll look up into heaven and start hollering. You know what it's doing? It's thanking God for bringing him out of that valley. And tears will actually come out of his eyes. It'll actually cry. Now, when we come out of the valley, what do we do? Well, thank you, Lord. I'll go to church Sunday. What we need to do when we come out of the valley is get on our knees and thank God for bringing us out of the valley. Because he could have left us in that valley. He could have left me 23 years ago and just walked off and left me and said, I gave you a chance and I'm not going to give you another chance. That's it. But he reached down and pulled me up. He reached down and pulled you up. He could have walked off and left everybody. He don't, he don't need us. No. We need him. Yeah. And we need him more today than we've ever needed him before. Amen. The time that we're living in today, the devil is on the rampage. He knows he don't have much time to go. He knows what his obituary is. He knows he's going to end up in the uh, uh, lake of fire. And he's going to take all he can with him. 
He's going to try to get Christians to backslide, to go to hell with him. Don't do it. Don't, don't listen to the devil. Now is the time to ask God to come into your heart. You know, the Bible said you've got to be drawn by the Holy Spirit. You've got to be drawn. In order to be drawn to the altar to, uh, to ask God for forgiveness. The Spirit is lifting. It's lifting now because we don't see people in the altar praying no more. We don't see people getting saved no more. A few weeks ago, we had one to get saved. That, and now, people say we don't need it no more. Once saved, always saved. I believe that as long as you live it. But you can backslide. It said that in, uh, in Revelation chapter 3, verse 5. In Exodus chapter 32, verse 31 and 32, read it. We all need, we need the Lord today more than we've ever needed him. We're going to need him tomorrow more than we do today. Don't put him on the back burner. Put him in front. God's not going to take a back seat to nobody. God loves you. You may think, well, don't nobody care. God cared enough to send his only begotten son to die for you. How, who else would do that? We love you. God loves you. Don't let the devil put it in your head that nobody don't love you. There's a lot of Christians out there today that, that actually listens to the devil. They, and, and, and they'll do what the devil tells them to do. Now, now the devil is convincing. I'm not giving him no praise, don't get me wrong. I'm not giving him no praise at all. I hate him. But the devil is very convincing. And look at Adam and Eve. Now, he, he tempted Eve with the, with the uh, tree of life, the tree of uh, fruit of life, whatever. I can't think what it is, but anyway. He tempted her with that tree, with the tree. He didn't do it all at one time. He had to gain her confidence. It could have been one day. It could have been three or four days. It could have been a week. I don't know. But he had to gain her confidence in order to tempt her. Now, the devil will come in and try to gain your confidence as a Christian in order to tempt you. Don't fall for it. As a Christian today, if you're a true Christian today, you've got the power to rebuke him. And you use that power. Get behind me, Satan, in the name of Jesus. That's all you have to say. And he's got to go. He cannot stand that name Jesus. When they hung him on the cross, I believe the devil was out there in that crowd. And he was clapping his hands and said, well, I got rid of him now. I don't have to worry about him no more. He's gone. He thought he was gone. My Jesus rose in three days. My Jesus is not dead. He's alive in heaven. And we're going to see him one day. And it's not going to be long. There's nothing keeping him from coming right now. Nothing at all. He could step out of those eastern skies any moment. Are you ready? Are you ready? If he stepped out of the eastern skies right now, would you go? Well, I don't know where I would or not. Make sure. You know where you stand. Make sure, don't, don't, well, I, I don't, I, I might go and might not. Make sure you know where you stand. There ain't no maybes about it because it's going to happen in a twinkling of an eye. And if you don't know, you may not go. 
I want to know. I want to know where I stand with the Lord every second of the day. I look up in the heavens and say, Lord, is everything okay with me and you? If something's wrong, it's wrong on my end. If something's wrong between you and God, it's on your end. It's not on God's end, it's on your end. You got to fix it. Something's wrong on my end, I got to fix it. You can't fix it for me, and I can't fix it for you. You got to fix it yourself. God has shown you what it is. If something's wrong on my end, he showed me what it is, I'm going to fix it, and I'm going to fix it as quick as I can because I want to make it to heaven one day. We're not promised the next second. We're not promised the next minute. We can leave this world any second. And where you end up, heaven or hell, is on you. I want to make it to heaven. I want to make it, I, I want to see those streets of gold, the walls of jasper, the gates of pearl. I don't want to end up in hell where it's burning forever and ever and ever. The only time you come out of the great white throne judgment when God judges you and throws you into the lake of fire. That's the only time. Know where you stand with the Lord. If you don't know, Ask him. Find him a Bible-believing church and get into it. Visit us down here at Bernard Road Church of God. We would love to have you. If you don't know the Lord, ask him to come into your heart before it's too late. One day it's going to be too late. I don't know when he's coming back. You don't know when he's coming back. Only God himself knows when Jesus is coming back. But look at the signs of the time that's going around right now. It, it can't last much longer. It can't be much longer. The world is worse today than it's ever been. It's worse today than Solomon and Gomorrah ever had time to be. Know where you stand with the Lord. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Father, we thank you, Lord, for the time you give us today. Father, I ask God that you reach out and touch each and every individual today, Lord. Father, if they're not saved, Lord, I ask God that you'll put them under Holy Ghost conviction, Lord, and bring them in, God, before it's too late. Father, we thank you, God, for everything that you've done. Father, I ask God that you'll walk with us, Lord. Lead us and guide us in the way that you have us to go. And we give you the praise, honor, and glory in Jesus' name. Amen.